Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today we're going to be discussing some events and characters from the Harry Potter books that were subsequently omitted from the films. The fact that some of these events' characters were never shown on screen has certainly always been a sore subject for Harry Potter book fans, but today I've got some good news. Just recently a new Harry Potter TV show was announced for HBO, and I suspect that this could be what we have all been waiting for a chance to finally view some of these unexplored moments, places, and characters on screen. The show is allegedly set to span a decade, and provided that the actors have to age to play their older selves, I'd be willing to bet that this decade-long promise is going to be somewhat accurate. With that said, a decade-long TV series exploring the books presents an awful lot of opportunity to uncover and unravel aspects of the story that may have never been brought to the silver screen, and I'm here for it. Without further ado, here's 10 pieces of uncharted film territory. Dumbledore's Funeral In the books, Dumbledore's Funeral is a somber and emotional affair that brings together many of the main characters in the series. The funeral was attended by witches and wizards from all around the wizarding world, who came to pay their respects to the greatest headmaster Hogwarts ever had. Classes and exams were put off for the funeral, and a chorus of merpeople sang a tribute from below the lake surface. It was a moment of closure for the characters and us, the readers, as we said goodbye to one of the most important figures in the series. Omitting Dumbledore's funeral from the film version of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince was a controversial decision, as many fans felt that it was a crucial scene that should have been included. However, it turns out that the reason for its omission was related to the film's budget, being deemed just too expensive to film. This is surprising given the commercial success of the books and films, but what can you do? The Marauders James Potter, Sirius Black, Remus Lupin, and Peter Pettigrew comprised the Marauders, a group of four Gryffindor boys that got up to all sorts of mischief while attending Hogwarts school. Together the four boys created the Marauders Map, a tool with which they were able to navigate the school and avoid the prying eyes of professors. The Marauders were important because they were integral to the backstory of the series, particularly in terms of Harry's connection to his father and the rise of Lord Voldemort. The Marauders also had a huge role in the backstory of Severus Snape, whom they bullied relentlessly at school. The story of the Marauders was ultimately left out of the Harry Potter films because it was not considered essential to the main plot of the series. However, this decision was met by fans with a considerable amount of scrutiny. Gaunt Family History – Tom Riddle's Origins The pensive is a magical object that allows users to view memories as if they were watching a movie. In the Harry Potter series, Dumbledore uses the pensive to show Harry memories of the Gaunt family on a couple of different occasions. The Gaunt family is an important part of Voldemort's backstory, as they are his maternal relatives. Voldemort's grandfather, Marvolo Gaunt, was a powerful wizard who possessed the Resurrection Stone, one of the Deathly Hallows, nestled inside of the infamous Gaunt family ring, the same ring that, in a roundabout way, led to Dumbledore's death. Voldemort's mother, Merope Gaunt, was a tragic figure who fell in love with a muggle, Tom Riddle Sr., and was abandoned by him when she became pregnant with Voldemort. The Gaunt family history is important because it sheds light on Voldemort's twisted origins and his obsession with pure-blood wizardry. These memories offer important insights into Voldemort's past and motivations, particularly his obsession with immortality and his disdain for his muggle heritage. I would love it if moving forward they put a lot of focus into this, as Voldemort's origin story is something that I've always wanted to see on screen. Apparently the decision to cut these memories came from the filmmaker's desire to streamline the story and focus on Harry's journey. Nevertheless, these would have been a great addition to the films. Hermione's House Elf Activism Spew Spew, aka the Society for the Promotion of Elfish Welfare, is an aspect of the books that didn't appear in the films at all. In the books, Hermione embarks on a crusade to ensure that house elves, who are heavily mistreated, are saved. In turn, she creates the Society for the Promotion of Elfish Welfare as a way to raise awareness about the mistreatment of house elves and to improve their working conditions. Hermione starts the society after she sees Winky, an elf who isn't in the films, being treated horribly. Hermione's advocacy for the rights of house elves is an important subplot in the Harry Potter series as it shows her compassion and commitment to social justice, even in the face of opposition from other witches and wizards. Spew was cut from the films because it was considered a side plot with little relevance to the main storylines of the books. However, this decision did stunt Hermione's character development to a degree. This omission segues nicely into the next one, Winky the House Elf. Winky was a house elf in the Harry Potter series that was introduced in the fourth book, 
Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. She was a devoted servant of the Crouch family, particularly Barty Crouch Sr., and was dismissed from the family's service after being found with a wand under suspicious circumstances. After being sacked, Winky goes into a deep depression and succumbs to alcoholism, finding solace in butterbeer. Winky's story is important because it highlights the mistreatment of house elves and the complicated power dynamics that exist between wizards and their servants. The Sphinx's Riddle in Goblet of Fire In the Goblet of Fire, Harry Potter encounters a Sphinx during the third task of the Triwizard Tournament. It had the body of an overlarge lion, great clawed paws and a long yellowish tail ending in a brown tuft. Its head, however, was that of a woman. She turned her long, almond-shaped eyes upon Harry as he approached. The Sphinx's Riddle is a key moment in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire that tests the wit and intelligence of the Triwizard Tournament's contestants. The riddle is as follows. First think of the person who lives in disguise, who deals in secrets and tells naught but lies. Next, tell me what's always the last thing to mend, the middle of middle and end of the end. And finally, give me the sound often heard during the search for a hard to find word. Now string them together and answer me this. Which creature would you be unwilling to kiss? It has been reported that the Sphinx's riddle was omitted from the film due to time constraints. Peeves the Poltergeist Peeves is a mischievous and chaotic presence in the Hogwarts castle that delights in causing trouble and annoying the students and staff. If you aren't already privy to Peeves, he is Hogwarts' infamous poltergeist. Not to be confused with ghosts, poltergeists are essentially indestructible spirits of chaos. The name poltergeist is German in origin and roughly translates as noisy ghost, although it is not, strictly speaking, a ghost at all. The poltergeist is an invisible entity that moves objects, slams doors, and creates other audible, kinetic disturbances. It has been expressed that Peeves has existed at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry since its inception in 990 AD. He purportedly came with the building, and though he's not a major character in the books, he certainly does add a sense of whimsical humor to the story that is missing from the films. But the reason for Peeves not showing up in the films is not a good one. You see, the role of Peeves was actually filled by actor Rick Mail. He even filmed his scenes. However, when the film came out, Mail's scenes were mysteriously cut without any kind of explanation. Neville's parents and their tragic story Neville Longbottom's parents, Frank and Alice Longbottom, were aurors who were tortured into insanity by Bellatrix Lestrange and other Death Eaters. Neville's relationship with his parents is a key part of his character development as he struggles with the trauma of their condition and the pressure of living up to their legacy. The reason for Neville's parents being omitted from the Harry Potter films is still not clear. However, there are a few possible reasons. The first being that their storyline may have just been too dark. The second possible reason is that filmmakers may have instead wanted to shift their focus to Neville's character development, highlighting his growing confidence and bravery rather than his dark history. Dumbledore's Past Dumbledore's backstory is a complex and fascinating part of the Harry Potter series. In the books, we learn that he had a troubled relationship with his family, particularly his brother, Aberforth. We also learn about his relationship with the dark wizard, Gellert Grindelwald, which ultimately led to tragedy and regret. Dumbledore's past is important because it sheds light on his motivations and his relationship with Harry. I imagine that Dumbledore's past was omitted so that it wouldn't overshadow Harry or change the direction of the films too much. It's also worth mentioning that Dumbledore's past has been, and hopefully will be, highlighted more in the Fantastic Beasts films. Voldemort's Application In The Half-Blood Prince, there is a moment where Dumbledore, using the pensive, shows Harry a memory of Tom Riddle, Voldemort, applying for the position of Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher at Hogwarts. This was the second time that Voldemort had applied for the position, first being denied by the previous headmaster at the age of 18. After being denied a second time, Voldemort jinxes the role, paving the way for all sorts of mayhem for anyone who may occupy the role in the future. I would have really appreciated this staying in the films as it would have shed some more light on why the turnover for the Dada position was so high. And that's it for this video. While the films may have done an excellent job, I still think the best way to experience the full richness and depth of J.K. Rowling's world is via the books. What else would you like to see incorporated in the new show? What other parts of the books would you like to see immortalized? Leave a comment down below. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.